Hello everyone, welcome back guys. Hope you all are doing well. This is Mohammed Badrudja and today we are going to start GraphQL API vulnerabilities module from Prosegur Web Security Academy. Um, so before going further to see how this vulnerability arises, how you can detect it and how you can exploit it and we will go to see the cases and the scenarios to exploit these vulnerabilities. I want you to understand what is GraphQL first because this is very very important if you are going to learn about a new vulnerability you must understand the concept behind it and to understand these concepts this is very important to understand what is graphql how that works how the query is written uh, then we will be able to understand and to know how to detect the vulnerabilities right so before going further this little disclaimer as always for you this video and its content are only for educational and awareness purpose and I do not support any unethical or illegal act. So let's go and we will see what is GraphQL. And for this high level overview and briefing, I'm going to completely use the content from Portswigger because it is going to save a lot of time for me uh, and I do not have to write all these queries. So it is going to save a lot of time. And as you know, I am really a uh, bad in talking while typing. So that's been said, what is GraphQL? So GraphQL is an API query language. This is very, very important. It is an API query language, which is designed to facilitate efficient communication between clients and server, of course. So it enables the user to specify exactly what data they want in the response. And the most important thing about the GraphQL and why it is uh, becoming very very popular because uh, unlike REST APIs it is going to uh, give you or retrieve the exact exactly what data you are going to retrieve or exactly what data you want in response because in REST API you have to communicate with multiple endpoints and this is again a very uh, good advantage about the GraphQL that it is not going to uh, not going to contact or not going to communicate with multiple endpoint. It is going to communicate with only one endpoint. So you will see that in a minute GraphQL have some specific endpoint, whether you are going to say uh, C slash GraphQL slash API slash V1, something like this. So whatever request you are going to send with the query, that request is going to communicate or is going towards just one endpoint and in rest api what you have to do if you want to see the product you have to go to the slash product endpoint if you want to see or retrieve the information about the employee you have to communicate with the slash employee endpoint but here in the graphql this is the most important uh, thing that you everything is going to be uh, terminated on the one endpoint. Fine. Another thing, another most important part is in REST API, sometimes you get the access information retrieved by the query. But here in the GraphQL, you are going to exactly get what data you want to retrieve. Right. So GraphQL services define a contract through which a client can communicate with the server and the client does not need to know where the data reside because you are going to just one endpoint. Okay, instead client send queries to a GraphQL server which fetches data from the relevant place as GraphQL is platform agnostic. It can be implemented with a wide range of programming languages and can become used to communicate with virtually any data store. So there are some myths or misconception about the GraphQL before that uh, you cannot or it is not compatible with uh, different different language or you can use GraphQL with specific uh, frameworks or standards but no so you not you do not need to worry about this so okay I hope up to now the picture is clear now how GraphQL works so GraphQL schemas define the structure of the service data listing the available object known as types, fields and relationships. Okay. So there is a schema which defines the structure 
of the data and when you are going to write the query how you will write the query we will see that in a minute the data described by the graphql schema can be manipulated using three type of operations the first one is query which fetch data mutation with the mutation query you can add change and remove data subscriptions are similar to queries but set up a permanent connection by which a server can proactively push data to a client uh, and this type of queries or subscriptions mostly uses where you need a real time change in an object and mostly uh, you will see that has been used with the web sockets or with the live chats okay uh, one more thing i want to mention here that it is here also all graphql operation use the same endpoint this i already mentioned and are generally sent as a post request post request so this is recommended and the best practice that you use all request that is calling to the api to the server uses post request with content type application slash json but it has been seen that you can use get request also okay so mostly mostly you will see the post request and this is the best practice to use the post request this is significantly different to rest api because in rest api you use get post put option delete so all these uh, http methods you use in the rest api but in graphql it is recommended and best practice to use post request and well implemented and well designed servers in the well designed servers and well implemented server you will see all the request uh, method are post request okay so in rest api we use different different http methods which use operation specific endpoints across a range of http methods so for different endpoints you use sometimes you get only you use only uh, get http method sometimes you only use post http methods okay uh, but with graphql the type and name of the operation defines how the query is handled because you are going to only single endpoint okay so how server will identify that what you want to do because in rest api mostly server will understand that what you want to do by the http request method but here uh, by looking at the query the server will def uh, server will decide or will understand that what a client is requesting and what a client is trying to do so uh, we will see that in a minute graphql services generally respond to operation with the json object in the structured structure requested right now we see before in the previous section that schema defines the data structure right now what is graphql schema all these things are very important and i highly recommend you to read this page so if you see here i will directly jump to this this example the example below shows a simple schema definition for a product type and this exclamation sign operator indicates that the field is non nullable when called and this is mandatory means whenever you see in the query this exclamation sign uh, with any field that means that field is not going to be null and this is a mandatory field right so this is a schema definition you can see this type type which is going to be your object okay and in the object what you have you have a project a product sorry and these are the fields so here as you can see the id value is mandatory you cannot put you cannot leave it null okay and these all are the fields okay so price as you can see this data type is integer and it can be null so schemas must also include at least one available query 
usually they also contain details of available mutation when whenever you uh, hear the name mutation in the graphql so you should think about adding or editing or deleting something right okay um here you can see what are graphql queries so there are few things like query query is operation operation type because you are going to a single endpoint suppose that slash graphql or slash v1 or slash api so only one endpoint you have where you go for any activity to retrieve the data from the data store or to put the data or adding the data something like this uh, so this operation type is going to be uh, seen by the server to detect or understand what operation you are trying to do so query operation that means you are making a query okay there is query name so first of all you have to specify the operation type then the query name or operation name and then the data structure and optionally in the query you can put one or more arguments so it depends on what you are trying to uh, get right so this is the example here you can see this is the query type that means you are querying some data and this is the query name and this name could be anything whatever you want then what you are saying get product means you are trying to get the details of the product where the id of the product is 123 right so now note that the product type may contain more field in the schema than those requested here so schema basically have all the fields like product id product name product value how many number of products are in a store uh, description what is the price of the product uh, means there are too many fields in a schema but when you query the data you query only what only name and description the ability to request only the data you need is a significant part of flexibility of graphql and this is the most important part okay um what are graphql mutations so as i mentioned before that mostly when you are using rest apis at that instant server actually identify after looking at the method it is going to decide what to do so mutation change data in some way either adding deleting or editing it they are roughly equivalent to rest apis post request put request and delete methods okay so like queries mutation have an operation type so the query will always be something like this you have operation type then operation name and then the fields and you may also add some arguments so there is a mutation you can see this is the operation type when you put here query that means you are trying to retrieve data but once you are trying to add edit or delete something you put here the mutation and after mutation you will specify that i want to create product and what you want to create new product and the product name is this cocktail glasses and it is listed yes or no and here as you can see id name and listed one thing to be uh, notice here that what data i am creating it does not contain id field right here is no id field so this id field can be auto generated so whenever you add any new product okay so at the time of processing this request it will auto generate the id value suppose there are four product and you are creating one more product so the next product you are creating is going to be assigned id is equal to 5 and rest of the things you already defined here and one more important thing which i mentioned earlier that the fields in the schema if it contain the exclamation sign that means that field is not going to be null so you must mention here that field because it is unnullable so if it is auto generated it will auto generate it its value but if it that field is not auto generated and it 
that field must not be null that means you must mention that field here okay so as you can see this is the mutation query this is the query and this is the response so you can see data create product and it creates it so this id value is auto generated and this these fields and value you mentioned in the query right and you can see everything is in the json format now the next step is components of queries and mutation so the graphql syntax includes several common components for queries and mutation as we saw in the earlier examples when you send a query or mutation you specify which of the field you want the api to return so you must mention the field okay now here the another case the example below shows a query to get id and name details of all employees and its associated response in this case is going to be id and in the name you are going to mention name dot first name and name dot last name so these are going to be the fields which you request so query this is the operation type then this is the query name and you are going to say get employees and what employees uh, uh, what information you want to retrieve is id and name and in the name in the name you are going to uh, call first name and last name if you also want to get the middle name so you will also mention here middle name so whatever you specify here you will get only that data and the response will be like this in the json format so the first employee which contains id value is one its first name its last name blah 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 so this is easy right uh, nothing to be worried up to here now arguments there is also a case for argument so the example below shows a get employee request that takes an employee id as an argument right so in this case suppose you are going to query you are going to fetch information about an employee some specific information like its first name and last name but you want this information only for an employee that contains id equal to 1 so there is your argument this is your argument right okay and here you have the response um so this is important if user supplied arguments are used to access objects directly uh, this is the thing access object directly so if you mention an argument and that argument access object directly then a graphql api can be vulnerable to access control vulnerability such as insecure direct object reference because it is going to whatever argument value you are going to put it is directly going to interact with the object and retrieve the information about that so if an attacker is able to change the value of the argument he is going to get the data of all the employees right um next is variables so the best way instead of using argument you can also use variable variables are variables enable you to pass dynamic arguments rather than having arguments directly within the query itself right so this is the best way um variable based query use the same structure as query everything is same okay uh, when building a query or mutation that uses variable you need to what you need to declare the variable and its type add the variable name in the appropriate place in the query and pass the variable key and value from the variable directory so there is these three things you need to understand and you need to apply when you are using mutation or building a query or mutation query using variables so here you can see this is the query operation type its name and this is the variable with the dollar sign you see you define here variable you put a variable and you see here that exclamation means this id variable value is not going to be null and the um, definition is 
get employees means we want to get the employee information and here whatever you pass value for this variable is going to be uh, inserted here and then you will get you mention the fields right and here in the last you say uh, variable id is equal to one right so instead of directly mentioning argument you pass it through a variable so finally the value of the variable itself is set in the variable json directory and you are going to get your reply right now aliases as well as the name is concerned aliases means uh, a person or an object is identified through multiple names okay um, so graphql objects can contain multiple properties with the same name for example the following query is invalid because it tries to return product type twice this is invalid query why invalid query because you can see here it is trying to return the product type twice so you can see get product and get product so this is incorrect if you want to call product one multiple times you can use aliases so how you can do this instead of putting get product and get product these two are same so this is going to be invalid so what you can do you can use alias like query and this is the query name now you say product one is equal to get product and product two is equal to get product so eventually you are calling the same product multiple uh, you are calling product multiple times within a single query but you use aliases product one and product two right um, okay and this is the response so product one is going to be this product two is going to be this <coughs> using aliases with mutation effectively enable you to send multiple graphql messages in one http request okay now fragments okay so here you can see in this case so this example below shows a get product query okay there is a get product query um, in which the details of the product are contained in a product info fragment so as you can see here fragment product information on product with id name and listed so query will call query will be like this so query get product id is equal to one and instead of writing here all the fields you just use the fragment product info and product info contains these fields so you are not going to uh, mention you do not need to mention these fields again and again every time whenever you need this information you will just use this fragment but with the fragment you can also use field there is a fragment okay you know that product info contains these three fields id name and listed but you want a stock also so instead of writing four fields like id name listed and a stock for these three fields you use this fragment and then you use a stock also so the query will be built something like this where id is equal to one and the response will be like this okay so the next one is subscription this is again a good concept to understand about the graphql so subscriptions are a special type of query as i mentioned uh, and it is used to uh, little real time updates to the client without the need of continuously or continually pull the data and most importantly it is going to establish a long lived connection with the server um, and this functionality that requires any functionality that requires a small real time updates like chat system or collaborative editing you can use subscription that point at that point so as with regular queries and mutations the subscription request defines the shape of data to be returned and mostly you 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 will see that in the web sockets and interrospection 
in introspection uh, it is built in feature of the graphql uh, functions that enables you to query a server for information about the schema it is commonly used by the applications such as graphql ide so uh, instead of actually this this is uh, this can be a graphical user interface where you can see the schema instead of instead of in the json format you will have a window a window and in the window you see uh, uh, a schema product okay there is a ob there is an object product and all its field so you can uh, instead of writing all this you can just check or uncheck what you want or what you don't so um, you can specify fields and structure of the response you want to be returned for example you might want to want the response to only contain the name of the available mutations so uh, but this is again dangerous if the introspection left enabled so uh, it is dangerous because it could uh, disclose information which is very risky as it can be used access potentially sensitive information such as field descriptions and help an attacker to learn how they can interact with the api it is best practice for introspection to be disabled in the production environment of course because uh, instead of instead of guessing something or instead of writing something because a person can only write this query sorry a person can only write this query if he knows about the object about the schema right but if an attacker get the access of introspection ide he will be able to see everything and whatever he wants he can get that information so that's the thing i hope you understand and i will highly recommend you to read this whole content to have a better idea or a good grip on the graphql queries because in the future uh, labs you are going to deal with these queries that's it for this video in the next section we will see actually the overview okay and how these graphql api vulnerabilities arises so there are two ways a graphql is vulnerable the one is implementation flaw and the second one is design flaw so while we solve the labs we will see how these implementation flaw can be exploited and how these design flaws can be exploited okay and what kind of vulnerabilities could be there within the graphql apis okay um, finding graphql endpoints this is important uh, and i in the previous section when i was describing what is graphql i many times talk about this uh, endpoints so you can see these are the common endpoints you you will see uh, normally with the graphql slash graphql slash api slash api slash graphql when you are doing directory enumeration for the information gathering phase if you are doing uh, directory enumeration and you see any of these any of these endpoints you may check the graphql if you see slash graphql that means there is uh, there is graphql right and you need to check the vulnerabilities uh, or test the vulnerabilities or test this endpoint if you see slash api slash api may contain many other things but if you see slash api you can uh, further test this endpoint to detect maybe there is graphql but if you see graphql then it is uh, interested endpoint for you and sometimes you will see if you do not get all of these endpoints so maybe you will see slash v1 that means graphql okay uh, request method i also already mentioned that you this is best practice for production graphql endpoint to only accept post request with the content type application slash json and uh, if you are not using this that means it may be vulnerable to csrf so 
using post request method with the content type application slash json help you to protect against csrf vulnerability so however some endpoints may accept alternative methods such as get and post request that uses content type xwww form url encode okay okay if you see here there is a universal query common endpoints i already mentioned that request method and initial testing so i would highly recommend you to please read all of this it is very important okay so that's it for this video in the next video we will solve the first lab of graphql and hope you understand see you in the next video bye